we have seen in a previous video how to create a DEC UDF, a low LOD template. In this video, I will show you how to create a high LOD template, an engineering template of this same deck, with more detailed data such as rebars. This is based on the civil engineering role and civil 3D design application. I will create this data in the same deck product I used for the UDF. First thing to do here is to define what is the base axis system for the template. This axis is already available in my inputs, so I will just use the define component command and select it to automatically publish it. I will also publish my alignment and axis system, deck 3D volume, and front of the spans. This will allow me to create more robust links inside my deck product. Same way, I publish the parameters I want to reuse in my product, the ones driving my deck. Now, I will detail the work breakdown structure of my deck by creating first a dedicated deck part for the concrete. And I will then extract the deck volume created in the previous tutorial and perform a closed surface from it to create a solid. I then link the IFC parameter called net volume with a formula so that it updates when the volume is changing. We can see now in the beam attributes that the net volume is now calculated and linked with a formula. I could add some detailing operations in there, such as chamfers, fillets, uh, decompose the deck into precast and cast on site, and so on. But to keep it simple for this example, I will keep it like this. Now, I will create a new reinforcing bar product to add rebars into my concrete. I create a product because at some point, I want to be able to decompose it into several rebar parts, one for each rebar layer. I then insert a skeleton to store my 3D geometry. I edit the skeleton by double-clicking on it and copy-paste my publication as a result with link so that they update if changes occur. Now, I will add some reference geometry for my rebars. Instead of picking concrete faces as in the previous rebar tutorial, I want to pick a single feature so that everything is properly recomputed in case of a drastic change in the curvature of my deck, for example. I start by splitting my alignment to keep only the portion inside my deck. I project it into the XY plane to have a spine that I will use for sweeps. Now, I will create the different faces required as reference for my rebars. I create a rectangle for the rebar frame I will add inside my deck. I constrain this frame with the parameters that are already driving the deck so that my geometry updates properly. I create output features of all the lines so that they can be picked independently outside my sketch. I create another line for the top of my deck. And two others for the side of the deck. I link them also with the parameters
and set them also as output features. Renaming is optional, but it will help a lot in case you want to modify the part in the future. Now, I will sweep each of the output features along the alignment, with the pulling direction being the Z-axis. As you can notice, without a spine, the surface is swept perpendicular to my alignment. I want the start and end limits to be vertical, so I will add as spine the project alignment on XY plane. I do the exact same operations with all the other output features so that I get a single sweep feature for each deck reference faces. Now that my sweeps are all done, I want to get the inner and outer limits of my top surface to use those for longitudinal rebars. I do then a parallel of my alignment by half the deck width parameter. And set it as geodesic, meaning that the distance is measured along the support, here the top surface. I activate the both sides option to get the two limit curves. I will now create the midpoints on those two parallels that will be used to define the start and end of the pattern of my longitudinal rebars. I create on one of the midpoints a reference axis system with the x axis tangent to the parallel. and the Y perpendicular to the top surface. This will be my reference axis system for the longitudinal rebars and will be then properly recomputed whatever is the shape of my deck. X is the direction of the bar itself, Z the direction of the pattern, the repetition of the bars. Now I can add my rebars. Since my deck can have different curvatures when it will morph along my alignment, I will use the ISO path from Surface Boundaries template. As you see in the preview, it will properly distribute the rebars on a surface. To know how to define the inputs of these rebar templates, you can always edit the documentation by clicking on the icon. I will pick the sweeps as defined in the picture, starting first by the layer support, which will be the right side. Then I replace the automatically generated axis system by the one I created before on the midpoint. Make sure a row indicating the location of the bars points toward the inside of the deck. I replace all the different reference surfaces by my sweeps and the front of the span surfaces. A preview of the bars is now generated. I can then edit the pattern and set as pattern limit the midpoint of the second parallel. Then I define a spacing of 1 meter and can generate a preview of the bar. I can set the diameter I want to use and my rebar layer is now created. As a second rebar layer, I will define a frame that will follow the other surfaces. I pick the YZ of my base axis system as rebar support, and then I select the four other sweeps. I 
I do not want a linear pattern because my alignment is curved, so I remove it and add a curvilinear pattern that will follow the alignment. I want the spacing to be calculated on the projected curve on x, y and set the axis orientation as direction imposed so that the z axis stay vertical. I define the spacing for my rebars. I then change the start and end offset to add a covering for the bars. My frames are generated and I can set the bar diameter. To have the frame laying just below the longitudinal bars, I can drive the covering of the frame through a formula so that it is equal to the physical diameter plus the cover thickness of the longitudinal bars. This way, any change that will occur on the first layer, such as a new covering or a change in diameter, will be automatically propagated to the frame. For example, I can change the bar diameter. The frame covering is then updated so that it stays in contact with the longitudinal bars. I can now save my template. Now that my product is prepared, I will create the template by switching to the Engineering Templates application. By clicking on the upward arrow, I select the data to be put in my template. Then, I select the inputs that will be the same as UDF, the alignment, the base axis system, and the end axis system. I publish then the parameters I want to modify at instantiation, and I can save my template. Now, I will go back to the object type I created for my UDF. In the resource table, as product-based design, I will assign my engineering template. I can then save it, and my template is ready to use. Now, let's go back to the bridge where I instantiated already my UDF. I hide the deck UDFs and double-click the bridge. I can then go to the change level of development command. Here, we can see all the object types instantiated in my bridge. I select the deck templates and choose the option Expose and Synchronize for the product. And I can now click on Process to instantiate my detailed templates. Now, I have four detailed decks available in my work breakdown structure, each of those with a concrete deck and rebars. As you can notice, rebars have been morphed to the alignment, recomputed following the length of the decks. I can go back to the Bridge Design Assistant, change parameters such as deck width and height, and the position of one pier, for example. I then need to update my bridge. Before the change, I had 16 longitudinal rebars, and it is now changed to 13, following the change in deck widths. Frames are also recomputed with the change of deck lengths. Using the beam attributes, I can display the net volume of each deck. Those attributes can also be exported through IFC. I can also do another change of LOD to automatically generate one part per rebar layer. This way, I get quantities of rebars, length, and weight in the IFC attributes. We have seen here a really powerful process where you can capture your engineering requirement into templates that you can then reuse from one project to another 
to generate automatically a preliminary bridge and from there automatically generate the detailing. This example was demonstrating it with rebars, but there are a lot of other data that you could embed in your templates, such as form work, drawings that will also update to match the specification of the project, and so on. This opens the door to a lot of different scenarios where your imagination is the limit. Mm -hmm.